Will you guys quit there? <laughs> Get a little off here. It's been a long day. But here we are. And I thought I'd tell you guys about, about you know, one of the, the most interesting service calls I've gone on in my, in my distinguished career as uh, a troubleshooter and repairman of electrical equipment in the manufacturing industries. Now, you look at me right now, you don't think that the guy who looks like me can go out there and uh, put a machine back on wheels. And, uh, and yet, I have recently participated in uh, this uh, enterprise called, well, it's, it's Kitchen Craft out in Springfield Road. It's one of, it's one of the many uh, uh, woodworking industries in the province of Manitoba by which we encompass, you know, furniture, kitchen cabinets, windows, doors, all those kind of things which in this province are dominated by businesses of uh, Mennonite uh, uh, background. Okay, you know, you're talking like Palliser furniture, like the crown and the jewel, the jewel and the crown, and then, you know, stuff like Lowen windows, Wilmar windows, what have you. It's, if it wasn't for the Mennonites in this province, I don't know if there'd be, uh, there'd be anyone having a job in, in manufacturing. Uh, and of course, you got the garment sector. That's a whole other question, and that's where, where my people sort of uh, create the jobs. And what a miracle that they are still able to do that in this era of, uh, of free trade uh, and, you know, c competition from overseas. And, you know, I'm not trying to knock free trade. I mean, the, the guys in the garment industry, they have, they have the guts. I mean, they'll face free trade right on. They're, they're gung-ho to compete. Um, and it's uh, quite something. You know, manufacturing is a fantastic uh, thing because you got all these jobs in everywhere, you know, there's a service sector and, you know, insurance doing this and that, and there's office buildings full of people. But you get the feeling that, you know, a country can't really run if it doesn't have manufacturing, can it? And uh, I went through engineering, and we learned, you know, the theory of, you know, electrical science and all this stuff. And you, you have the idea that some, someday you're going to apply it in manufacturing, because that's, that's what it's all about. But then it turns out, that, I don't know, the job you get uh, when you come out of university, you, you never see manufacturing. So I worked, for example, in the government in Pinwa for three years and never really came to grips with production, you know, generating a product and, and putting people to work. And that was one of the reasons I left what we used to call the government gravy train at that time. I went and got into the field of, of equipment maintenance. And there I found out that all this uh, science I learned was totally useless, totally useless. I had to learn from scratch. But uh, uh, I, I think I have, have a good capacity to learn. And, and, you know, I tried to put the kind of lessons which I had picked up to, to use out in the field. And so after a couple years scratching away, I had a handful of customers, guys that would call me up when the equipment broke down and I'd go fix it. And uh, there was a lot of logic involved, a lot of logic and patience and, uh, and uh, knowledge of uh, electrical science and principles, and you learn about machinery and every. It's a beautiful field to work in. But um, I should get to the point, right? So, so anyhow, uh, last week I was down at Kitchen Craft, and uh, they changed the motor on this, this thing, the Holtzma. The Holtzma is, is a big, I don't know what it does. It, sort of cuts up big boards. It's, it's from Germany. And uh, they had a two-speed motor on one of the drives, and uh, they had, the motor had been rewound and shipped back, and they had to, uh, uh, one motor was burned out, and they were putting in a rewound motor. And, you know, a two-speed motor, the way you have, get a two-speed motor is by switching poles. Now, a motor wants to go at one speed. A motor is based on the fact that your AC power is at 60 cycles, and it sets up a fixed rotating magnetic field in the motor, which wants to drag the motor around at exactly 60 cycles a second. Except it's got to be just about 58 or 59 cycles a second, because it doesn't work if it's ta exactly at synchronous speed. It's, it, in order to generate the power of torque, it's got to slip, so slip behind that rotating field a little bit. Now this is the detail. I don't know how the point is. You, so some 60 cycle power, motor wants to turn at 60 cycles per second. You can also make it turn at 30 cycles per second, 
by changing the number of poles you wind on the motor. It's just a matter of switching windings. Sometimes they'll build one motor so that by switching the windings back and forth, you can run it either as a four pole or a two pole motor. So you got either uh, 30 cycles or 60 cycles. But the basic problem is you put the motor in there, there's a bunch of wires coming out of it, and you gotta know where to connect the wires. Okay, and there's six wires and they're all marked. But sometimes they get unmarked. And in this particular case, in the process of changing one motor to another, the, the leads had gone unmarked, and so there's six wires, you don't know where, they have to, where the heck to connect them. <clears throat> so the guy comes up and he says, well, he measured the ohms. In some places it's 10 ohms between two points, and some places he reads 17 ohms, and some places this and that. And he was well, take a look at it. And uh, now what you got to uh, figure here is uh, how are you going to figure out which wire is which wire? And uh, the nice thing about this job is it's so rare you get to use math on the job. And all the time you study all this math and you learn all these math things. And in this, in this particular job, I actually got to use my, my, my math ability on an actual electrical motor problem. And it's Am I talking too slow, or am I, have I got uh, We're all eager to hear the story, Mark. Okay, so I better get to the Show board. us the math. Yeah. So, uh, here's the motor, and uh, what you see is a big motor, and there's the case, and then there's this uh, terminal uh, panel where they brought out six wires. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you put the ohmmeter here, and you put the ohmmeter there, and here and there, and then you don't know which wire is which, because they got mixed up in the process. But at some points, you measure uh, 17 ohms. 17 ohms, like here, you might measure 17 ohms, and there you also 17 ohms, various points. And then, at other points, we measure 27 ohms. And you poke around, and sometimes you find it says 30 ohms. So we, we set the problem, let's find some kind of logical circuit whereby these ohms make sense. You know, but in, in what, how could it be set up internally so that those ohms make sense? Now, now, those are the ohms of the coils, and all the coils, let's assume that they're all identical coils, and we don't know how many coils there are. But by luck, I got it right off the bat, and I don't want to make a long song and dance out of this, but by luck, I, I just said, let's assume that we got six coils, and they're somehow arranged in a kind of a ring. So I said, suppose we had six coils, and we draw them like so. We got a reason in electrical technology for drawing them in a triangle, which is kind of sad, but suppose that this is how it's laid out internally. This is just a guess, and if this doesn't work, we're going to try something else. But we just guess that it's like this. Okay, six coils. And we don't know what the ohms are of any coil, but let's say it's 10 ohms for each coil, that they're all identical, 10 ohms. Okay. Uh, are you guys whispering about something that our audience wants to know about? Or what? No, carry on, Marty. Okay, thank Great. you. So, okay, so then let's say we put, let's suppose we put the ohmmeter between here and here, right across these two points. Because let's say they brought out six points. You see, this is, these points would theoretically correspond to the wires that they brought out. And it's all just a theory. So we have to say, we have to say, suppose this is how it's laid out. Let's see if, let's see what the ohms should be. So between here and here, what have I got? I've got 10 ohms. 20 ohms, 30 ohms. Okay, got 30 ohms around this path. And going the other way, I've also got 10, 20, 30 ohms around this path. So the total ohms I should read between these two points would be 30 parallel 30. And that's how we write it in electrical. We call it 30 parallel 30, which is 15 ohms. Okay, fine and good. Now, what other possibilities are there? Okay, we could measure between here and here. Or we could measure, let's say, between here and here. Well, actually, that's exactly the same basic total ohms, because it's 30 this way and 30 that way, so it's not different. But then what if we measure between these two points? Okay. Now here, you've got one path, which is 10 plus 10, which is 20 ohms going this way. But there's an alternative path, which is 10, 20, 30, 40. So your actual pathway would be 20 parallel 40. Now, the way we do this, and it's kind of a cute way of doing it, is we say, how, we say what is 20 ohms? Okay. <laughs> 20 ohms is the same as 40 parallel 40. And what we mean by that is if you have a 20 ohm resistor, like so, you got the same total resistance as if you had two 40 ohm resistors in parallel. Okay, 40 and 40, and let these both be 40s. 
is 40 here and 40 here. Parallel is out, it gives you half the resistance. So 20 ohms is equal to 40 parallel with 40. So now I look at the problem we're trying to solve. I'll just take this scruffy work off the board here. And I've got, what I want is 20 parallel with 40. So that's the same. If I replace this 20 by 40 parallel 40, what it is, this total problem is equal to 40 parallel 40 parallel 40. Now, if you've got three equal resistors in parallel, the total resistance is one-third the resistance. So that's 13 ohms, 13.3 ohms. That is delightful, Martin. That is just delightful. <laughs> I've never seen that in any electronics uh, technology textbook, that simple uh, explanation of, it is good. of different numbers in parallel. Beautiful. It is good. It's, uh, and Neil's always so mad at me because I always do this mega hard math on TV. Well, he's not wanting something that, <laughs> that he can understand. <laughs> and uh, it is a nice thing. And there we go. Now, now so we've got, we've got that oh, depending no. where you measure the ohms here and there, you could have 13 ohms here, or you might have 15 ohms there. If you measured, if you measured across a path like this, you might have 15 ohms. If you measured here, you'd have 13 ohms. Of course, if you measure here, it's also the same, 20 parallel 40, so you also got 13 ohms, and so on. But there's one more possibility, is you could measure between adjacent <coughs> points. Now, when you measure between adjacent points, what you got is you got a 10 ohm path, but then you also got this long path around here, five coils, 50 ohms. So you got 10 parallel 50, and we're gonna use the same trick. And by the way, you notice, it pretty well, that long 50 ohm path doesn't help the electricity much getting from point A to B. If you try to get current from A to B, most of it's gonna follow the path of least resistance. And this is gonna help a little, but it's not gonna help all that much, okay. So the total resistance of this total path should be just a little less than 10 ohms. And we'll see that it is. We'll look at this 10 here, and we can consider it to be equal to what? Five parallel 50 ohm resistance. That's right. So, so we have a six, effectively six parallel 50 ohms. So it's a, going to be a sixth of 50 ohms. Which is a sixth of 50 ohms is 8.3. Eight, eight and a third. Okay. And, you know, you won't believe it, but this is how I did it on the shop floor with the electrician looking over my shoulder. And just, uh, let's, let's see if we can guess, because I said, let's see if we can guess how these coils are laid out. Let's see if we can get some kind of guess. So I wrote these out, and look what I had. I had three calculations I got, three possible ohms, 8.3, 13.3, and 15. And then we looked at the actual ohms we measured, and it was 17, 27, and 30. Now it's totally obvious that the only way, we're getting these numbers out of here, all you gotta do is double these numbers up and you get these numbers out of there. Now it's a fan, so, so all it means is they're not 10 ohm coils, they're 20 ohm coils. Now we've got the circuit. Now we know where all the wires are, where to lay them out. It's a beautiful thing. And, and this is only half the story, you see. The real part of the math doesn't come in, because in the next part of the story, I start to use group theory. Now this is, but I can't talk about that today, because uh, we got a guest on, and John's... Well, Marty, maybe the guys in the studio will let us shoot another show. Uh... Because you know you got us all fired up on the story. Let's do a song, finish okay. your story, we'll, we'll do, and we'll do another show. You see, John is on jet lag. John is stuck <laughs> oh, in no. jet lag. It's after midnight. Can Here we tape another come. show after this? Guys? No. No, this is our last Jim. show. Jim! <laughs> Quiet. John, uh, John says I can finish my topic, and it's awfully sad because I call him out on show oh, no, notice and good. drag him out here. And, uh, and, uh, and he'll come back and do it again because he is, uh, he's a heck of a guy. So we're going to do a song, and then I'm going to come back to this, uh, this motor story because it is, it is going so nicely, isn't it? And sometimes I do such a cock up of, cock up of these stories and, and uh, like I'm starting to do now, right? Okay, let's, let's do, do a song. song. Do a song. <laughs> Which one are we going to do? That uh, City of New Orleans? Or what was that other one? Hank Williams? Hank, yeah, you were going to do the Hank Williams yeah. one. Country music singers have always been a real close family. But lately, some of my kinfolk have disowned a few others than me. I guess it's because I kind of changed my direction. Lord, I guess I went and broke their family tradition. Hank, why do you drink? And Hank, 
white hero smoke Why must you live out the song that you wrote Over and over Everybody makes my prediction If I get stoned and sing all night long It's a family tradition that sound sometimes. Yeah. And whose guitar did you borrow? This is James' guitar. Oh, he Hi, James. Oh, he doesn't have a TV. <laughs> James is a heck of a guy. And, uh, we had him on the show once. Yeah, we did have yeah. him on the show. Yeah. Okay, how much time we got left, boys? Ten minutes. John, you want to do your topic? Oh, oh okay, I'm going to say it. Oh, John is so polite. I feel so, I feel so guilty. Okay, and, you know, now it's almost uh, fantastic because you know, we've, we've sorted out the windings on this motor, the electrician's there, I say, okay, and, and it turns out, we, we now find that at least two of them are crossed over, because you see, one thing about this, what we see in the motor, we don't see this uh, big triangle here, what we see is, is a terminal block, a terminal block like so, six wires coming up. And now you've got to ask the question, how have they laid this out? And so it turns out that you've got 17 ohms, 17 ohms here and 17 ohms here, okay? It's like it's not the same ohms across each of these terminals. And, and God bless them, you've you got to depend on the fact that it's a machine out of Germany, Holzma. I don't know what Holzma means, if it's a guy's name, but it's woodworking equipment. Holz in German means wood. And in Dutch, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry is still on her Dutch kick. And you're going back, aren't you? In 10 days. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you're going to see Will? When yeah, you're, uh, I'm going to see Will. And he's going to pre be presenting his uh, thesis or something? Yeah, he studied some engineering stuff. Yeah. I don't know. He's got some Dutch term for it that yeah. I don't understand. You don't even know what the heck he's taking, right? No, yeah. not really. But they do have different... They don't have... Like we say, I'm taking this, I'm taking that, and we got a name for it. But you mm. don't know what someone's taking. If he's saying like engineering, social management, yeah. computer or something. Yeah, I don't but know. you see, if we the told him that we were taking human ecology or something, he wouldn't know either. I mean, just because okay. we've got our 
our discipline is divided up a certain way doesn't mean every country divides them up the same way, you see. It's just our perception that uh, pharmaceutical engineering is a definite discipline or something. But, you know, over there, it's totally expected to wash you know. Anyhow, the point is, Holtz means wood. Stoltz means, you know, what? does that mean anything in Dutch? Stoltz. I can't think of what it Proud in German. Now, German pride is what you can rely on when you're fixing this equipment. Is that those... Those, those the SMBs, they've laid it out so it's going to make sense. They're not going to put two coils this way and two that way. So you got to get it so that you read the same ohms across each of these nicely laid out points. Because they're Germans and they're going to do it for you like that. So first we flip two wires so we get all the ohms reading the same. Then following the logic, we find out how the circle is laid out. It turns out the circle is like this. Two, zip, zip, zip. And then everything's nice. Okay. So now we've got to make our connection. Now there are two problems here. Okay. There's six wires coming in and three of them are power. And three of them are going to this contactor that's switching them out into that four-pole, two-pole thing I was telling you for this two-speed business. Now, the two-speed situation looks like so. You got, you got three terminals, and this two-speed thing is just, you're just whacking all these three terminals together into one point, like taking three wires and whacking them together. And then it's supposed to change speeds, okay. So we hook them all up. We put the power on here, and we, and we got this thing on here, and and we try out the motor, and it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't switch speeds. Okay, so now we're in trouble. Now the big engineer is in trouble, the mathematician is starting to look stupid. Okay, so now, now, now here's, where, here's, where, I, here's where, I, where, where it became beautiful. I say, now what could be going on? What could be going on? Okay, and I realize there's two possibilities. Okay, here is where we got the power hooked up. One, two, three, there's your power. And here's these terminals that are being switched together to give you that uh, two-pole, four-pole business, okay? Theoretically, you're putting your power on here, and then you shorten these terminals together to, to switch your poles. Okay, that's the theory. Now I realize, what if, what if you got them rotated? Okay, so that actually, instead of doing it the way you're supposed to do it, now I'll take this off, and quickly draw this, this diamond one time. What if, instead of doing it the way you're supposed to do it, what we're doing is bringing the power in here and whacking these terminals together with the contactor? Okay, maybe that's what's screwing us up, huh? Instead of, instead of bringing the power in at these points in the circuit, maybe we're doing it that way. Okay. So you see, you see here I'm bringing the power in in the middle of these lines and, and, and putting those other contactors there, or vice versa. So I say, now I'm thinking this, and I say, maybe, maybe that's it. So I say, say to the electrician, what I want to do now is I want to take all these wires, I just want to repeat them once around the circle. He says, well, I don't know about that, because they're already mixed up. We're already, we don't know if this thing's ever going to work again, okay? <laughs> so let me try rotating the wires. Okay, so we rotate the wires. Doesn't the thing work? Okay. Okay. It was like, yeah. everyone looks around, son of a gun. Son of a gun. <laughs> it was like my greatest accomplishment as an engineer. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, on these things, uh, you look back and tell your grandchildren, huh? And now I'm telling you guys. Okay, so that's about it for today's show. Is that right? We've got about three minutes left. Let's go back and... Oh, and now the funny thing... Oh, now I guess I talked enough about that stuff. Because the funny thing is I still don't see... I still don't see how with that particular connection of resistors you switch from two pole to four pole. I don't see how you're actually physically switching the poles. But I knew that all along. And what I was relying on is whether I can see it or not, there's only so many possibilities. You know, what I figure is, I could have a completely wrong picture of what's going on <laughs> physically here, but it can't be all that wrong. I mean, at least it has to be right up to the level of symmetry, up to the level of permutations and combinations. The model must be at least that accurate. And that's what I mean when I said I was using group theory in solving this problem, because I said, no matter what's actually going on there, it must be topologically equivalent in at least some sense to what I got sketched on the board Therefore, I'm going to take this as my theory and run with it, right or wrong. Now, that's why I was able to fix it. Is that right? That's fantastic. Thank you, Sharon. My see Sharon, she's <laughs> always laugh her because she thinks, oh, she's my brother. Everything she does is so fantastic. And then, it is fantastic, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually so good, Sharon. Thank you. And, and uh, okay, so that's about it for the show. We just wrap it up with the song as usual. We're, we're going to do that one. Uh, A Willie Nelson or something? Oh, okay, yeah, can you get that harmonica going there, Dave? This camera guy, he, I know he's shy to play harmonica, but yeah, go for it. Try and get some of that in. It sounds so sweet. John, give John give you the microphone. He laid it down there. Come on, John, give him the microphone. Riding on the city of New Orleans. Illinois Central, Monday morning mail. Sixteen cars, sixteen restless riders. 
25 stacks of mail All along the southbound Odyssey The train rolls out of Kansakee And rolls along past houses, farms, and fields <laughs> Passing trains that have no name the Graveyards full of old black men And the graveyards of rusted automobiles Again, good morning. Good morning. 